Hey guys, welcome. This is our study guide, spring semester. All right, and let's go ahead and get started. Our first problem here is a cross products problem. So I'm going to be using my calculator quite a bit on here. Um, so I highly recommend that you do as well. So we're going to go ahead and first multiply 9 and 52 to get 468. And then here we got to distribute. So if you have 39x minus 4, we're going to distribute that 39 Nathan announcement Scott, real quick. Pum, 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 pum. Nathan Joseph Scott. Nathan Scott. All right, Nathan Scott to the attendance window. All right, here we go. Uh, we have to distribute this. We get 39x, and then we're going to do 39 times 4, because that's minus 156. So this is just a two-step equation at this point. We're going to add the 156 over, um, and we get uh, 624 equals 39x divided by 39, and we're going to get x equals 16. All right, are the polygons similar? Now there's two things that need to be true for similarity. One, we need to have all our angles to be congruent, and two, we need our sides to be proportionate. Okay, since we're dealing with the 90 degree here, we can go ahead and check to see if sides are proportionate. So I'm gonna put small over small, so uh, 1.6 over 3.2, so this is uh, small and small, and see if that is congruent to large to large. Okay, so if we cross multiply this, and these numbers are the same, 3.2 times 2.5, so we get 8 on that cross, and then 1.6 times 4.1, and we get 6.56, they're not similar, no, uh, so we don't really have to do anything past that. Again, we also couldn't say these are similar because I, uh, <clears throat> I don't have... Uh, full information, we could use angle or side angle side to help us um, to figure this out, but unfortunately our sides were not proportional. All right, given this triangle below, solve for x. Again, we're using similar triangles to help us solve. Um, so 20 should be similar to 15 as x is similar to 6 plus 15. So you take the pieces that are similar to each other, so 20 to 15, so I'm going uh, basically uh, the, the bottom to the top of the small triangle and then bottom to the top of the big triangle. So bottom to the top. And that's 15 plus uh, 16, which is 21. And we're going to cross multiply here. 20 times 21 is 420 if we cross multiply that way. And that will equal 15x. And then we divide by 15 and x equals 28. Okay. Alright, so these are saying that my triangles are similar, solve for x and y. So A is matching up with E, so these guys match, and then D with B and F with C, so they're actually laid over each other pretty well. You want to start with the sides that we know both of, so I'm going to go A, B, C to E, D, F, so I'm going to go 9 to 3, and then we'll do equals 15 to x. So that's one we can set up, and then we want to use the 9 over 3 again, and this time we're going to use the y. So I went 9 to 3, so I need to go y to 4. All right, so we have two cross products to set up here. So 3 times 15 is 45 equals 9x. So that's going to give us x equals 5. Over here, we're going to get, and this is kind of confusing, this is a y, and that's a 4. Not to be confused with one another. So 9 times 4 is 36 equals 3y, and that is going to give us 12. Okay, so again, similarities, we use a lot of proportions to set us up these first couple questions. Okay. All right, flipping it over to the back, name the three postulates and theorems used to prove two triangles are similar. All right, so we have side, side, side. Okay, side angle side okay and then <clears throat> this last one uh, usually gets kind of uh, confused with a lot um, it's not angle side side can't have that remember that okay so it's not that but it's just angle angle so those are our different types of similarities and we use this little squiggly guy to denote similarity okay which possibly our theorem can be used here to prove the triangles are similar well they share an angle here and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna match things up. So over here, the big side is 20. 
Over here, the big side's 15. So we're actually going to match those two guys up. So 20 to 15 should equal 16 to 12. So if that proportion works out, then I know we're in business. So we get 240 equals 240. So that's going to be side, angle, side. Notice the angle is included between the two similar sides. Okay. Uh, this one's pretty easy. We have two angles. So it's just single angle similarity. They're congruent. Okay. What's postular thing to prove these two triangles are congruent? Well, the only thing that could do would be side, side, side. Again, biggest should go with the biggest. Um, then the medium with the medium. And then the smallest with the smallest. And I would just reduce these fractions if I could. So this is 3 over 2. 3 over 2. And that's 3 over 2. So they're all the same. So this is going to be side, side, side. So they're, all the sides are similar. Again, not congruent, but similar. And if that is true, then we have similarity. Okay. Down here in the triangle below, BD is parallel to CE. Solve for AD and BC. Okay. So first of all, we already have a piece that we know is in common, this 10 and the 30. Uh, basically, what we know is we have a big triangle and a little triangle, and they're similar because they share angles. And these angles are congruent, these angles are congruent. So it's angle, angle that these two triangles are congruent. So we know that triangle ABD is similar to triangle ACE. That's why we are able to use proportions. So I'm going to go big triangle to little triangle or small triangle for these. So I'm going to go 30 to 10. Now I want to find BC, which is this little guy over here. Well, the big side, I don't know because I don't have that information, um, to the little guy, which would be 6. Okay, So I'm going to find this whole piece, which I don't know, to the little guy, which is 6. Okay. Um, so we'll cross multiply, that's 10x equals 30 times 6, which is 180, and x will equal 18. So the whole length here is 18, and then we can subtract, we get bc is actually going to be equal to 12. Okay, so we're just using basic subtraction. Again, we can do that again, big to small, 30 over 10, I'm going to still use that. Uh, to assist me here. Now I'm looking for AD. Uh, well, the big side's 21. AD, I don't know. We can cross multiply. So you get 210 equals 330. So divide, and we get 7 for AD. Okay? And there you go. That's how we do it. A tree casts a 30-foot shadow at the same time. A person is 6 feet tall casts an 18-foot shadow. How tall is the tree? So we have a tree with a shadow. The shadow is 30 feet. We have a person. Those are shoes, I guess. I don't really know what I'm drawing. And uh, he is 6 feet tall, and he casts an 18-foot shadow. So what's this? So we can use, um, since the sun's at the same time, they're going to use a congruent angle. So what we can do is I can use proportions. So x uh, over 6, x to 6, should be equal 30 to 18. And I can use my proportions here. 6 times 30 is 180. And that equals 18x, which means x is going to equal 10. All right. What is Pythagorean theorem? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. C is the hypotenuse. It is the longest side. Hey! Okay. When do you use it? When you're finding sides of a right triangle. When do you use it? Oh, here's a great example. Uh, a and B are the legs, so it doesn't matter which order. 8 squared plus X squared equals 17 squared. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do 17 squared is 289 equals x squared plus 64. Subtract the 64 from 289. x squared equals 225. Square root, square root. And we come up with 15. Okay, so that's actually a Pythagorean triple 15, 8, 17. Um, so if you have that one memorized, that one saves you some time. But you don't have to because you can use 
what's called the Pythagorean theorem. Exact form means no decimals, in case you're wondering, so do not use decimals here. This is going to be 10 squared plus 11 squared equals x squared, because x is the hypotenuse in this picture. So 10 squared plus 11 squared is going to be 221 equals x squared. And so take the square root of 221, and we actually just get the square root of 221. You can't simplify that. There's no number uh, that we can break that down to that will help us out. Okay. Number 14, we're going to go ahead and determine if these triangles are acute, right, or obtuse. So that is our goal. Um, and so what we want to do in order to do that is we are going to go ahead and take a look at how I could use this. So first of all, we need to throw them into the right triangle formula, which is 8 squared plus 10 squared, and then I'm going to do 12 squared. Notice I'm not putting equals or anything. I'm just going to put an empty box. Okay. So let's combine these real quick. So that's going to be 164, and 12 squared is 144. Okay. So if this value right here is bigger, which it is not, it is less than, okay, then we are dealing with an acute triangle. Okay, so if this side is smaller, it's acute. All right, let's take a look at the next one. 9 squared plus 12 squared, box 15 squared. So 9 squared plus 12 squared is 225. And 15 squared, believe it or not, is 225. And that means it is a triangle, and it is a right triangle, because they are congruent. We also have to check, make sure the two smaller are bigger than this one, which is true in each of these cases. So um, they, they're they telling us um, if does it create. So we should be checking 8 plus 10 is bigger than 12, which it is. And 9 plus 12 is bigger than 15, um, or equal to it works as well. Um, and then, uh, oh wait, I apologize. It has to be bigger. It can't be equal to. So, in fact, I, I take that back. Um, no, it could be equal to. It, so that's fine. Um, and 31 plus 35 is that. That's bigger anyways. 9 plus 12. I don't know what they And those are bigger. So that works. So 31 plus 35 squared. What is its relationship to 39 squared? See, this is the one where you're like, oh, they got to be the same. But probably not. So that's that, and 39. Okay, so in this case, again, this one's smaller, so it's an acute again. Okay, so two acute and a right. All right, 20 foot ladder is leaned up against a house. The base of the ladder is nine feet away from the house. How high up the house does the ladder reach? Okay, so. Um, this is our house right here. Here's our ladder. It's 20 feet. It's leaned up against the house, and the house is hopefully 90 degrees with the floor. It's nine feet away from the house. How high up does the ladder go? Okay. Well, we can solve this using Pythagorean theorem. X squared plus nine squared equals 20 squared. And so that's gonna be X squared plus 81 equals 400. Subtract 81 from 400. And we get 319. And then we can square root that answer. And that does not leave us with anything. We're out to the nearest hundredth place. So we're going to get about 17 point. First one's 10, the next one's 100. So 8, 6. And that's going to be in feet. Given triangle, solve for x, write your answer in simplified radical form. This is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So this is an x rad 2 position, x and x. So divide by 2, multiply by rad 2. So I'm going to get 5 rad 2 and 5 rad 2. That's our shortcut, if you guys recall. So those problems super fast. Uh, this one's going to be x, x, and x rad 2. So we get this to be 8, 8 rad 2. Love these problems. Okay. 
30, 60, 90, so cross from 30 is x. This is going to be x rad 3, and then 2x. So if 18 is 2x, x is going to be 9, and this is going to be 9 rad 3. Again, 30. Okay, now we have the x red 3 position. So we have to divide it by 3, multiply by red 3, that will give me the x position. So divide by 3, multiply by red 3 is 3 red 3. And then up here is 2x, so we just double it, so that's 6 red 3. Again, I'm really fast at this because I know my rules and I know how to use them because I do it a lot. You need to practice as well. 20. Okay, we got uh, Sokotoa. <clears throat> All right, and we're going from A. So there's my googly eyes. We have O, H for hypotenuse, O for opposite, and A for adjacent. It's right next to it. And let's go ahead and do our ratios. It's pretty easy. Sokotoa is opposite over hypotenuse, 12 over 37, then cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, 35 over 37, and then we're going to get opposite over uh, adjacent. Notice all three are different ratios. Alright, given the triangle below, solve for x, we're going to use trig, eyes on the prize, we have opposite and hypotenuse, I'm going to use sine 37 equals opposite over x. If the x is in the denominator, it can switch spots. And we just plug this into our calculator. Make sure you do it correctly. And if you're not sure if you're doing it correctly, well, double check. Come in and get help. Again, at the very beginning, it says round to the hundredths place, if you guys recall. So that's going to be 2. Okay, Google eyes on the prize. We have opposite and adjacent, so we're going to use the tangent of x equals opposite over adjacent. To get rid of the tan, I have to take the inverse tan. So I'm going to take the inverse tan of 29 over 21. And we get 34.1, or 54.1. Precise. And I think we have two more problems to finish part one. All right. Ten foot ladder resting against the side of home. Ladder is seven feet away from the base. What angle does the ladder create with the ground? All right. So this is a slightly different problem than one we had before. Sub ten foot ladder. It's seven feet away. I want to know what angle does it create with the ground? So here's the house. Here's the ground, and here is our ladder. Right. So what's this? So my eyes are right here. I have the hypotenuse and I have the adjacent. So I'm going to use the cosine of x equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Using Sokatoa, use the inverse cosine of 7 over 10. And we are going to get 45. And we're going to go degrees, because we're looking at an angle there. Okay, and last but not least, law of sines. So law of sines takes an angle, puts it over the other one. Now I have 99, 37, I want this angle over here. So if I use the fact that all angles add up to 180, this should be 44 degrees. So I can take the sine of 44 over x should equal the sine of 37 over 17. And we can cross multiply those. X times sine 37 equals 17 times sine 44. And then we can divide. And then we're going to get 17 times sine 44 over sine 37. I like to do this in a couple steps, so I'm going to show you on my calculator. 17 times the sine. 44, so I like to put that first, hit enter, and then I hit divide by sine of 37, and I get 19.62. Alright guys.
that is part one. I will see you in part two.